Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In this video I'll be looking at back EMF. What it is, why it's a problem and how to fix it. Let's start with what it is. EMF stands for electromotive force or as you and I know it, voltage. Basically it's the voltage you get back from an inductor. To be more specific I'm talking about an inductive load switched by a relay contact such as a secondary relay contactor, solenoids, electromagnetic motor brakes. I'm talking about DC devices only and I'm not including motors in this list. This ear solenoid is a great example of a coil wrapped around a steel core. And it's commonly used in the CNC machine to turn air on and off to pneumatic cylinders or to simply provide an air stream. Let's look at the operation of a typical solenoid. We connect the power supply to our solenoid and the current flows through the coil, which creates a magnetic field. This operates the plunger inside the valve and air flows. But what happens when we disconnect the power from the solenoid? Well, obviously the magnetic field collapses, the plunger releases and the air stops. But let's look a little deeper into this we have a collapsing or changing magnetic field inside a coil of wire. And the definition of a coil of wire with a changing magnetic field inside of it is a generator. This is the basic principle on how our mains power is generated. Hydro, nuclear, coal, wind, gas, they all spin a magnetic field inside a coil of wire. So back to our little solenoid here. What's the problem? Have you ever powered up a solenoid relay and then when you disconnect it you receive a shock? Ah! Maybe you didn't get a shock. Oh, but I'm sure you've all seen the spark when you disconnect one. This is the back EMF and it can really pack a punch. I put my oscilloscope across the solenoid to measure the back EMF and even though I only put 12 volts in, I got over 500 volts out. Now there's several problems with this. If this voltage gets its way back into your controller, it can cause some serious damage to the electronics inside. Even if not directly connected to your controller, it can still cause glitches that can prove hard to track down. You might see a stepper motor move when it shouldn't. Your controller might freeze up. Your USB devices might disconnect or you might even see the monitor flick. Well, making this video, I found that simply playing with the solenoid at my desk was enough to make my computer monitor go blank for a second or two. And that really surprised me. In no way was it connected to the monitor. These sorts of faults are nasty and while they don't cause damage to your machine, they can ruin your work and you can absolutely tear your hair out trying to find one. Lastly, these sorts of solenoids are usually turned on and off via a relay contact. That little spark you see erodes away the relay contact and causes pitting. The contact surface will become smaller over time as more of the contact is eroded away. And one of two things will happen. Either the relay will no longer conduct and the solenoid will stop working. Or the relay contacts will weld together and the solenoid will not stop working. So what's the solution? Fortunately, we've got three things in our favour. First... This only affects DC circuits. If you, the solenoid is driven by AC, you don't have this problem. Second, the back EMF voltage will always be of the opposite polarity to the voltage you put in. And lastly, because of the laws of physics, if the voltage out is 40 times higher than you put in, the current out will be 40 times smaller to balance the equation. Power out must equal power in. In fact, it'll be even less as there will be losses as well. So how do we fix this? Introducing the flyback diode, also known as a freewheeling diode, or as I like to call it, Eric. By reverse biasing a diode across the solenoid, 
you can clamp the voltage down so it doesn't rise to the hundreds of volts, damage your relay contacts, and cause glitches or damage to your controller. This time I'm going to do the same test with a diode installed. This is what I see. Instead of a 500 volt spike, I now see a 3 volt spike. The diode is clamping the voltage. This one simple addition to our circuit can save us damage and hours of fault finding, trying to figure out why our CNC machine is behaving strangely. I suggest you use something like a 1N4007 power diode, which will handle 1 amp when forward biased and 1000 volts when reverse biased. So it'll ha easily handle the current and voltage generated by the coil in our solenoid or relay. Best of all, it only costs a few cents. I recently brought a hundred of them for four dollars delivered off AliExpress. They're probably one of the most common power diodes in the world, so you will not have any trouble finding them. Now one thing to be aware of is that diodes are polarity conscious. And if you get the polarity wrong, you will damage the diode. The banded end of the diode goes to the positive side of your solenoid. So get out your meter, check which wire is the positive when the solenoid is powered up, and put the banded end of the diode to the positive side of the solenoid. That's it. Job done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and possibly learned something new. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing and ring that bell for notifications of all future videos. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.